Is it? Did you read it? I'm sure that you did that. <coughs> I'm sure that you did. That. So it was September. Is it this, September or December? Which is which question paper? Uh, December 2018. Let me look for the question paper. December 2018. I got it. Okay. So let me start to share my screen with you. Please guys pay attention on this question paper that we're going to discuss. We're going to apply those concepts that we've read. I've, I'm sure last time I've asked you to go through some uh, uh, accounting issues. And uh, um, just familiarize when you're auditing PPP exactly, uh, how basically how best can you design appropriate audit procedures? What are the procedures that you have to perform? And exactly how 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 can you apply the accounting standard in in the exam? So in the exam, it's not a matter of applying the whole accounting standard. Please, when you're applying the accounting standard, make sure that you are only applying relevant provisions of the accounting standard, not the whole accounting standard. Are we together? <coughs> Hello. Are you following? Yes, what I'm saying? following. That's good. So, uh, no, it's it's so most of you guys, uh, most students ask it, so how best can you apply? So, you have to learn today how to apply an accounting standard. Only apply only the provisions of the accounting standard that are relevant to the scenario that you are given. <laughs> yes, it's fine. So, let me scroll down. So here's the story of, of uh, Red Bear Sports Club. It's a it's, it's a Kanban which is in 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 a leisure, a sporting leisure, you see. So I'm sure that you've read this one question very carefully. So I'm going to uh, to start. So usually uh, in question number one, it's a 50 mark question. 46 marks they are awarded um, just for responding to the instruction in the email. From the audit engagement partner. So in this case, in question number one, your boss, audit engagement partner, may discuss with the group finance director or the finance director. Sometimes it will not be a group. So they may ask you to, at the planning stage, they may ask you to, to, to evaluate some business risks, to evaluate some audit risks or risk of metrum statements. I'm sure last time I've made clear, I've made a clear distinction between business risk and audit risk. Then the components of audit risk, there are three components, risk of metrum statement and detection risk. And risk of metrum statement has two components, uh, 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 inherent risk and control risk. Then I've clearly said, if you're asked to, to, to evaluate um, uh, uh, risk of metrum statement, please try to omit avoid discussing about or to evaluate detection risk. Why would detection risk is not a component of risk of metrum statement? Are we together? That's why I've chosen this question. Was you, you, uh, you, uh, in this case, you, you asked to evaluate both business risk and risk of metrum statement. So in this case, they say, the split of the mark allocation shown in the partner's email, exhibit one. Your boss is going to delegate the work. Of course, after this discussion, the, your boss has sent uh, an email to you. You are the audit manager. In this case, you are the audit manager, you're not a student. So we're expecting you to, re to respond uh, like a manager. Please, there's someone who, uh, please, I can't ask you to put on a headphone. There's some nasty feedback that I'm hearing. So please respond. Your respond must show that you are an audit manager. We need people who, who are practical when they are responding. Then the other four marks, you are given professional, they say professional marks will be awarded for the presentation, logical flow of the briefing notes, in the clarity of the explanations provided. Then you'll be given four marks, then 46 marks plus four marks, then two altogether, we get 50 marks. <coughs> That's good. 
So how best uh, can we present this uh, uh, marks? Simply this, you, you simply have to, that form of brief notes. You use the brief notes. Here is an exhibit one. This is a good example of brief notes two from subject. You don't say hello, you say introduction. Let us start by uh, uh, a presentation of work. Same right, presentation of work. Use brief notes. Use brief notes. What are the brief notes? This format of memo, memo format two from subject and then introduction. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, yes, we are following. That's good. So presentation in this case, you are engaging, but this uh, uh, email it's from what engagement partner. That's what they say to audit manager. You are the audit manager. You'll be given a title from uh, Stella Cross, audit engagement partner for Redback Sports Club. So in this case, first you write to audit engagement partner or to Stella Cross, comma, audit engagement partner for Redback Sports Club. Come on. From then say audit manager, or you mention your name first, then comma, audit manager. Are you following what I'm saying? From then mention your name, then put your comma this audit manager. Subject as it is, the subject just write as it is. Your subject just write as it is. Audit planning for Redback Sports Company and the evaluation of accepting Imu James Company as a potential audit client as it is. So far, any challenge. Because you are going to be awarded full Not marks for presentation and clarity and, and clarity uh, and logical flow of, of the idea. Any questions so far? <coughs> then you skip a line, there's an introduction. Then you have to skip a line, there's an introduction. You don't say hello, you say introduction. So when you write your introduction, um, introduction is something which is very simple. You are just, it's a brief of, of the email. What's, what's your email? What, what? So you are just what you are uh, required to do from A, B, C, D, E. These notes, uh, they include eva evaluation of the business risk. To be considered in planning the car, the campus audit, uh, and the risk of material to be considered in developing the audit strategy and audit plan. In addition, they include again the uh, the, the principal audit procedure that should be used in the audit of the grant received from the government. What else? You're just mentioning on in the introduction. <clears throat> the other thing, again, you're yeah, writing the introduction. The other thing is, is, is they include again the notes, they include the, uh, the matters uh, to be considered in deciding whether to accept and engage and to provide him James Kamban with an audit or limited assurance review. And finally, and finally they include uh, 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 a, 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 a discussion with an audit or limited assurance review of finance system is in previous years could uh, have uncovered the fraud. That's introduction. It's something which is difficult. Hello. So on your introduction. Yes, was, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you can you come again on the introduction? Mm -hmm. Where exactly? Uh, what what items are we supposed to include on the on the introduction? It's a summary of what you're going to write. You just mentioned these notes. What are your notes about? Then let me repeat it again. As introduction, just writing. What are your notes? What's the email? What is it all about? These notes, they include evaluation of the business risk to be considered. Starting from A, you just mentioned A, B, C, D, E, what you are required to do. Are you together? You're just mentioning from A, B, C, D. Are you seeing my screen? 
Yeah, yes, we are seeing the screen. Yes, I'm just mentioning this note. They included the evaluation of the business risks to be to be considered in planning uh, the audit, the company's uh, audit and the risks of material misstatement. I'm now on B. The risk of material misstatement to be considered in developing the audit strategy and the, the uh, uh, and the audit plan. First of all, continuation. The principal audit procedures to be used in the audit of the grant received from the government. And again, in addition, they include the, the matters, uh, evaluation of matters to be considered deciding on OD, uh, on, on the evaluation of matter to be considered in deciding whether to accept an engagement to provide in James Company with an audit or limited assurance. And finally, they include a discussion on whether an audit or limited assurance review of financial statements in previous years could have uncovered the fraud. I'm sure that you are following the way I was. Any challenge? So in other words, you're simply saying introductions made of copy and paste. Because you know, here it's clear written. You're just written what, what's your note, what, 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 what is your note, your notes telling us? What, what, what they are all about? You're just telling us from A, B, C, D, E. Any question on that? Yeah, it's now clear we can proceed. Okay, then after introduction, after introduction, you must keep a line. The first question you are required to evaluate the business risk to be considered in planning the company's audit. <clears throat> I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you get eight marks. So, the, so, you must know how many points that you're supposed to raise. Can someone try how many points are you supposed to raise for you to get eight marks? Four points plus explanation for each point. At least four points, isn't it? Yes, at least four points. That should uh, uh, raise them, uh, 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 evaluate them. The other thing, you have to understand the question verbs. Evaluate. What does the word evaluate mean? Mean to assess, isn't it? Hello? Yes, we are listening. Yes, what does the word evaluate mean? What does the word evaluate mean? Because failure to understand the equation verbs, I, I don't think the way you're going to express yourself will be quite correct. So to understand the equation verb is something which is very, very important. Evaluate. In this case, I'm sure the, the, the key words are evaluate and, and discuss. These are the key words. Evaluate. What does the word evaluate mean? A discussion of the pros and cons. Okay. Evaluation means you are assessing, isn't it? You are appraising, isn't it? You are what? You are appraising, you are assessing the significance of So that's what you see. Uh, the Wait, mean. The other thing that you must, must know is that the, the way the business race, people, most students, they, 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 they confuse, they, they ended up business risk and metronic statements. This was, can someone quickly tell us why are the business risks? Business risks. Yes, we did. We, 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 we did. We did discuss about this business risk. So, guys, you're not reading. Discuss about uh, can Can I try? They need to try, but something that, that, that you have in our notes. It's something that you have in our notes. 
that's why I've sent uh, that's why we, we, we have sent the question even did about this risk and all risk. Yes, you may try. You, you may use. Yes. yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it refers to events or conditions uh, whose occurrence uh, might hinder the the chances of an organization achieving its uh, strategic objectives. Okay. So business risk and if you seem referring to those risks, uh, to, to, to those risks that affect the business from from achieving its internet goals uh, uh, to meet its targets, isn't it? For example, for example, for example, there are some risks that may lower the profits in that query. There's some risks that may affect the business. Uh, 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 making inadequate profits, isn't it? Or even losses. There's some risks that may face the business, uh, uh, probably like uh, uh, bankrupts of, of, of a key sub. It's a business risk. Both the source of supply, if, if the source of supply, supplies uh, has disturbed, or the key supplies you know, face bankrupts also may affect us who are purchasing our, our raw material from that supply, isn't it? So that's good. So these are two things that are possible to, to know. Okay, let us get into. So in this case, they are saying two, I mean, they are saying eight marks. So you have, to, uh, uh, you have to, to number your work. After introduction, then you skip a line, they say A. Then you now say hedging. So in this case, you, you, you're not supposed to write, evaluate the business. No, 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 you're not the examiner. The examiner is the one who is requiring to evaluate the business risk. So you have to clear right, evaluation of business risk to be concerned in planning the company's audit. Simple that. Evaluation of the business risk to be considered in planning the company's audit, then you underline. Are you following? Are you writing something? Yes, we are writing. Yes. Yes. Then you underline. So then you skip. We need a heading. When, so the first thing, when, before you evaluate, the first thing you have to identify, the risk. The first thing you have to identify what? The risk. Now let us go into the, into our story, exhibit two. The first thing, before evaluation, the first thing you have to identify, the risks. The first thing you have to identify what? Hello? You have to identify the risk. A question there: Do yeah. we do we ident do we identify and list the the, the 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 four risks, or we identify one and then explain it and then go to the next one uh, like, like like that? Yeah, still, right? Let me you still continue to identify. You need to select what is written. So you're going to your heading is supposed to be derived from the from your identification from from what you have identified in the scenario altogether. Each heading represents one idea. Each heading represents what? One idea. Each heading represents one idea. So if we're saying identify, the first thing you have to identify so that then you quickly think about an, uh, an appropriate heading that you may put. So I'm going to read about um, first paragraph, business background. Are you seeing my screen? Hello? Yes, we can, can see. Can I read? Yes, yes, we are seeing. Yes. I'm going to teach you, please, how 
quickly think if after you identify, oh no, there's a business, this thing can have, can may affect the business from achieving. So quickly think about the, about uh, the appropriate heading that you may put. And your heading and what you're going to, to write should be in sync. We don't, know, we don't want to know where by your heading and what you're writing totally different. There's no logic at all. So I'm going to read business background, first paragraph. Red Bank Sports Company operates 20 sport and leisure centers around the country. So it's quite a number of, 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 of uh, sport and leisure centers, it's fine. Each center has a large gym and a swimming pool. And the men also have tennis and badminton courts. Don't start to ask yourself, what is their badminton courts? No, no, no. Just, just know that these are courts, like tennis courts, basketball courts, like given the nature of the company's operations, it has to comply with the health and safety regulations set by the National Regulatory Board and its facilities are inspected regularly to ensure that all regulations are being followed and for the company to retain its operation license. Are you noticing something? Are you identifying a risk there? Yes. Where? Uh, compliance with the uh, health and safety regulations. Yeah, but 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 the, the point that suppose when I identify is that it's first I inspect it regularly. That's where the, the risk Come in. that point is emphasizing now. That point that no, this one is a is a, a highly regulated you know, industry, isn't it? Why to ensure that all regulations are being for and for the government to retain its operating license? So it means we need a logical flow, we need a nice identification. So let us let me let us identify. You have to write. I'm going to teach you how to make identification. First, identify, then write it. So in this case, we need a heading. First thing you have to write a heading. Which heading is, uh, is suitable from this you no know, paragraph uh, from from what we have read? A heading, appropriate heading. Uh, how about uh, compliance with the health and uh, safety regulations? Uh, you're repeating you say a lot of things. I, I thought probably you just write non compliance risk, isn't it? Non compliance, what? Uh, okay. Non compliance risk. So, uh, guys, when you're writing this one, you as an order just applying your professional skepticism. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are assuming what the, you are just, all what you are doing, it's a, it's a matter of assumption. You're just assuming. I think when you're writing, you just think of what can happen, what can happen, what can happen. So please don't limit yourself. An auditor, that's why it's a prerequisite. You, uh, you have to apply. You are required by the auditor to apply professional services. If you are given a scenario, what do you think? How the build, how the client's business objectives, goals can be affected? You are going to assume to look this, this, this. So in this case, non-compliance risk is fine. Non-compliance risk, then underline is a heading. Then the next thing you have to identify. Then say the clients. It's better to, the way when I say the client, I see, no, I've mentioned just, just good. I have said that ready back sports command. So there's no need for write so many words. If the moment I say the clients, the clients facilities are inspected regularly. You see, that's where the risk is. That's that's the statement that emphasizing what I'm trying to express. So the client, I'm sure that you're writing, the client, the client's facilities. The client's facilities are inspected regularly.
to ensure that all regulations are being followed. To identify simply means you're just picking, you're just selecting from the scenario, using the words in the scenario, that's what it means, the word identify, you are just recognized. So the client's uh, uh, facilities are inspected regularly to ensure that all regulations are being followed and for the company to retain its operating license. Full stop. That's good identification. Then they have to, co to continue. Full stop continuation. They say, this means that, this means that, the client is operating in a highly regulated environment. This means that the combine, the client is operating in a highly environment. Now I've started to assess. Yes, in a highly regulated what? Industry or environment is fine. So, full stop continuation. It's a paragraph that we're building here. This should be a logical flaw. So, if the if the Kanban uh, 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 yet right, full stop continuation. If the Kanban found not to be in compliance, if the Kanban found is found not to, not to be in compliance, not not to be in compliance. If the client found not to be in compliance with health and safety regulations. Comma, automatically its license would be automatically its license would be automatically its operating license would be revoked automatically its license would be re revoked be revoked which uh, uh, comma which have uh, a reputational effect which have a reputational effect comma which have a reputational effect And and in the a log ego. Hello? Hello? Hello, sorry, so we had lost you. It was breaking. Okay, so yeah, there's someone who was calling. So I was not uh, talking, it's, it's fine. There's someone trying, who's trying to call. Just a minute, let me respond to you. Okay, so uh, I'm saying, um, now it's clear, isn't it? So I'm saying, uh, I'm sure I've mentioned about what a reputational effect, isn't it? And the and it and it will be difficult for the Kanban to operate as a green concern. Even the green concern of the Kanban 
would be questionable and the grain content of the combine would be questionable. That's good. Full stop. Any question on that? Hello? So, uh, so are, are we saying uh, all these points that you've just highlighted do only a new two max? Yes, you only that's a paragraph. Two marks is a lot of mark. That's minimum. There's a minimum when you're marking, there's a minimum mark, then there's a credit mark on each point. You'd be surprised someone who wrote, who wrote you know, three points given given uh, 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 eight marks. You'd be shocked. Why? Because there's a minimum mark and a maximum mark. Now it depends the way you have expressed yourself. So when assessing, please, when I finish and stand, show us how the business objectives uh, uh, could be affected. How? Yeah, I've clearly mentioned about that. No, look now. They so it's a highly regulated industry. So there's a, if if they are found not in what, uh, uh, not to be in compliance, automatically their li operating license will be revoked, which have a reputational consequences for the general public, and of course, it's going consistent as would be questionable. How come? How can you operate without a license? It would be something which would be difficult. Which means already the Kanban when concern can be affected as well. If you're no longer operating, how do you achieve your goals? No, then there's no other way that you can achieve your goals without an operating license. Isn't it? Hello? So people, they yes, write so, many, so people, they try, but means they write so lo lots of things which are, are unnecessary. A lot of ideas trying to imitate, to copy what is written from in the solutions. The solutions that are meant for examiners, that are meant for examiners. If I am educational, I'm supposed to be given a, a credit marks. And those points that are not exhaustive, is just to guide you. The examiner, they just to guide the examiners. So more, um, more students, they raise different points, but still you pass, you get. Isn't it? Now is asking something is different. We're talking about business risk. You guys, did you read about business risk and risk of material statements? In this case, we're talking about business risk. Totally different story about risk in, uh, with the risk in material statements. Please, please, please. Correct that from that call. We are talking, we're discussing about business risk, not about risk of material statement. Try to avoid mentioning about, focusing, mentioning about financial statements, impact on financial statements. When you're discussing about business risk, try but only to, to avoid, totally avoid about mentioning about the financial statements because businesses, they don't focus on financial statements. They focus on the achievement of what? Achievement of what? Goals, going concern of the business, continuity of the business. Yes. So that's how that's the say logical flow of idea. I'm sure my idea is flowing from the from the heading identification and the way I was assessing the risk and its impact on the business. Any question that? Hello? No, it's it's clear we can proceed. Yes, let us proceed. Let's find another um, uh, uh, business risk. Simple heading, just imagine the paragraph. Is it, is it too long? Hello? Because don't write like you're producing a marketing scheme. You're not producing, you don't run a marketing scheme for you. Just imagine if you're trying to copy what is written exactly in the those uh, solutions, question papers, no, solution. I won't finish the exam. 
eyes be closed, for example. They're trying to guide. As an examiner, uh, 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 I should not train myself thinking of the, uh, quickly. I was supposed to be quickly rem, rem, not to be reminded. But after uh, I go through those solutions, now I get able to know uh, this person. I'm sure what you've jotted down is makes sense again. So those points are not exhaustive. It's a matter of guiding you. Right. Let us move on. Or just pick it randomly. They're saying, um, okay, let me go on the second paragraph. Let me just go the second paragraph. Let's see. The campus board has approved a plan to expand through acquiring other leisure and sport facility providers. This strategy is not likely to be implemented for another two years. When the board would uh, 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 would like the first acquisition to take place, however, potential target uh, targeted company will be identified in the next 12 months, 12 to 18 months. Ultimately, the board would like to seek a flotation of the company within five years, and they could that ex expand the company would improve profits and make a stock exchange listing more feasible. Red Big Sports, another product, Red Big Sports Kanban has a small internal audit department with the two staff who report to the finance that at the board does not have an audit committee. That's good. So let us try to pick what is written. Red Big Sports Kanban has a small external, uh, external internal or so internal audit, uh, department with the two staff who report to the financial and as the board does not have an audit committee here you have to apply what you've learned when, when we are doing corporate governance do you remember we did corporate governance isn't it hello so quickly yes. think about yes so what, what, what what's your assessment here there's there are some Poor corporate governance practice in place, isn't it? Isn't it? And at the same time, this Kanban is is, is no is like to seek a flotation of the Kanban within five years. Flotation means they are seeking to be listed on the Zimbabwe Exchange, uh, for example, in the London Stock Exchange, for example, in the New York Stock Exchange, for example. Are you following what I'm saying? So the appropriate heading here is it's a matter of corporate governance issues, corporate governance. So you have to recognize the corporate governance. Corporate governance. So when I identify, make sure that there's a logical flow of idea of your identification, make sure that you are flowing. So we have tried to be exposed to well, the client has a small internal audit department. I'm sure that you're writing. The client has a small internal audit department with the two staff who will report to the final. Let me highlight where, where I am. I'm sure that you see where, where I've highlighted. So Red Big Sports Kanban has a small internal audit department. The two staff will report to the final director. If the board does not have again its board, uh, uh, its board does not have an audit committee. That's good. That's good identification. So we need a heading. That's why I say corporate governance. So you're going to tell us corporate governance that uh, this proper governance that is in place. They may affect the business from achieving its intended goal. In this goal, which goal? They are trying to seek a flotation of the company, which means there is a goal that, that they have to achieve in the next five years. Get, so please try by only to link the story, read the whole story. That's why I have sent this question paper in time, so that you may familiarize with the whole story. So I'm sure that you have written this. The client is a small internal audit department with the two staff who report to the finance director. Comma, as the board does not have an audit committee, full stop. That's good identification. 
then when assessing and touching this in this in this case then say um of course of course of course there i'm sure there's somewhere that, that is, it was clear written that this one there's no need to comply with corporate governance issues and stuff yes of course there's no need here the company is not listed and therefore does not need to comply with lo local corporate governance regulations it's fine so what are you saying what are you saying we need is a paragraph uh, which is flowing. So I have to go back and pick up on the say, of course, it's not a listed, it's not a listed company. There's no need to comply with local local corporate governance. But since it's, it's you know it's, it's seeking uh, is it, like to to seek affiliation of the company within five years. You see, the way I'm I'm assessing, appraising my point, guys are we together? Hello. Yes, we're following. Yes, sir, we're following. Try, Hello. Try uh, by all means. Try by all means to 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 to. Okay, it's fine. Try by all means to understand the whole story, where you are coming from, and where you are going, so that when you're building a, a paragraph, you 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 be able to build a meaningful paragraph. Don't forget to part of read from exhibit one, exhibit two, exhibit three, exhibit four. Try to combine those ideas that are linking. Look here, I've come back to it is written, the comma is not listed and therefore does not need to comply with local corporate governance regulations. We are being told. Then after one, two, three, third department, they are saying Red Bank Sports Club has a small internal audit department with the two staff who report to the finance director as the board does not have an audit committee. And again, on that point, they say one of the non-executive directors is Elijah. You know, they have two non-executive directors out of what? Only two. I don't know if they've mentioned the total number in that paragraph that I've highlighted. Only two non-executive non directors. So you're just highlighting why are you say why 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 uh, uh, why you chose the heading corporate governance. <laughs> so the clients. They can a small internal audit department with the two staff who report to the finance director. And again, the board does not have an audit committee. And again, the board uh, comprised with the board comprised with two non-executive directors. That's good identification. Full stop. Then you continue your statement. Now start to appraise. Of course, of course, uh, it's not a listed company. There's no need to, to comply with local corporate governance regulations, but But, but the board uh, would like to seek a flotation of the company within five years. So what? There are some listing requirements, which means what are the listing? Which means for for for, for the for this board to achieve this uh, uh, to achieve this, they have to implement good corporate governance sooner. They have to meet some listing requirements sooner. Like what? They should have an audit committee which uh, fully furnished with the independent non-executive directors. They should have an internal audit department with sufficient staff and uh, who report to, 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 the, to, to the audit committee. They should have a number of sufficient executive, uh, uh, non-executive directors in the board so that they may challenge the views of the executive directors. Otherwise, this may delay the flotation of the company within, uh, uh, or to achieve this goal. Or this may delay the flotation or the Kanban uh, uh, to be listed within five years, full stop, we are done. So I'm sure that you are listening, you are paying attention from where the way I'm expressing myself, there's a logical flow of idea. And I'm focusing on the goals of the organization. I'm not creating my own goals. 
I'm trying by own to link in this case, it's a goal that the board has to achieve within five years. Any question on that? Hello? Uh, no questions for me. You see how simple is it? People, they struggle, struggle to link the points, trying to say a lot of things which are unnecessary. Trying to claiming the answers that are written in the in the no, in, in those solutions to make the to make you if you want to make your life difficult try to claim those if you want to make your they guide you how to express it but there's so many things that will be written so many things so many areas oh you can do this or you can do this they are being guided the examiners someone can write this way someone can explain this way someone can, but you need a point which is clearly uh, appraised. I'm sure on that one, we've discussed a lot about the business risk that they require for, I've discussed only two, just to sh show you how to, to, to express, how to, to identify and to appraise your point. It's not a matter of crashing national. I'm sure, um, and the wording that I'm using, uh, I'm, sh I'm sure it's very clear that um, I'm not obvious. That could be can, may. Thank you for that. So let us move on part B. Part B you are required to evaluate the risks of material statement to be considered in developing the audit strategy and audit plan. So can, can someone tell me the first thing here are the keywords, the risks of material statement. What are the risks of a material statement? What are the risks of a material statement? Hello? Hello? Hello, we are listening. Yes, I'm sure I've said something about risks of metro statement. What are the risks risks of metro statement? Risks of metro statement. You forgot. Um, it is the risk that um, the financial statements um, of uh, an entity may be misstated, uh, whether it is by error or uh, through fraud. Uh, but uh, it's something that uh, happens before uh, audit procedures. <laughs> something happens what? I'm saying it's, it's something that happens before audit procedures are, 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 are carried out by the audit. <laughs> right, guys, uh, let me say this for the last time. Um, risk of metric is uh, the, the, it's a component of what risk. So there are two components. I keep on repeating the same thing. I, I'm not changing my ways. I've said it on, on Tuesday. And again today, I've said it with, uh, when we, yes, I'm sure the time we started our lesson, I've defined what are the risk of metro statements. Risk of metro statements as component of um, of odd risk. Odd risk has three components or two components, risk of metro statement and, and detection risk. And risk of metro statement is two components, in on risk and control risk. And we've discussed about in and risk and control risk and detection risk on Tuesday. So in this case, there's the evolve the risk of metrium statements, which means these are the risk um, 
Yeah, uh, th that may affect the credibility of the financial statements that are issued by the client. Yes, that may affect the credibility of the financial statements that are being issued by the client. That's what we call the risk of metrum statement. So we have to consider that we want to develop the audit strategy and the audit plan. What, so what is the difference between an audit strategy and the audit plan? It's another keyword. What is the difference between an audit strategy and the audit plan? So when you talk about the audit strategy, it's an overall plan of the audit, overall. Then the audit plan now, it's in detail plan. In other words, uh, it's now breaking down the audit strategy in specific areas that are going to be audited. So that's why, cool. that's why we call it an audit plan. So these are two terms that are very important. Of course, we've discovered the question verb evaluate means appraise, assess. And they say 18 marks. So how at least how many points you suppose you should raise? You must know how many points you should raise in this case. So when you are assessing or evaluating the risk of material statements, please you are going to focus on the financial statements, not on the goals, not on the objectives of the, of the clients, but on the financial statements. Because why these are the risks that affect the credibility of the financial statements. So tell us how the, finance statement, the client's financial statement, they could be materially misstated. When they are appraising, please clearly tell us how the client's financial statements, statements, they could be, or they can be materially stated. Are you following on what I'm saying? That's good. So yeah, at least if raise eight points or nine is fine. Eight, nine is fine. So, we're going to discuss only four in this case. Evaluate the risk of metering statement to be concerned and develop the audit strategy. So you have to skip by the SAB. We are numbering no way. Then we have to find evaluation of risks of material misstatement. Then underline evaluation of risk of material misstatement. Then you underline. Then you underline. <laughs> then you underline. Then you underline. So let us choose only four points that we're going to discuss together. Are you still there, guys? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Are you there? Yes, we are here. Yeah, that's good. If you are there, it's fine. So pay attention. Pay attention. I want to mix uh, those uh, these ideas. Applying with other information from other exhibits because we do have four exhibits. How do you link so that you may build a meaningful paragraph? So I'm going to start where it is written. Here, let me highlight. There. In June 20x8, the company opened a new coastal sport and leisure center with uh, which as well as offering the usual facilities. Also has a scuba diving center and offers other water sports facilities. An investment of 12 million was also made in new gym equipment across all centers to ensure that the company offers the most modern facility to its customers. Full stop. Did you notice something? Did you notice something? The main issue about an investment of million was, was also made in new gym and uh, equipment across all centers to, to ensure that the company uh, offered the more, most modern facility to its customers. Quickly think about which standard does it suppose quickly think about and which appropriate head that we have to put. The main, the main issue about 
the treatment of this 12 million in the financial statements. So you have to think, brainstorming, something may go wrong in accounting, in treating uh, when, when this amount is being treated in the books of account. Something may go wrong. Why are you saying something may go wrong? Because you're really thinking about uh, about uh, probably certain accounting standards, certain provision of a certain accounting standard. An investment of 12 million was also made in new gym equipment across all centers to ensure that the company offered the most modern facilities to its customers. <coughs> what is it? So you were right in this case. In appropriate heading, we have to put in appropriate heading. There's investment. So you write capital investment. There's a heading, capital investment. Then underline. Did you write? Did you write capital investment? <coughs> Did you write? Yes, we have written. Okay, it's fine. Capital investment. Then underline. Then the next thing, identify. Identify. An investment of 12 million was, was made in new gym equipment across all centers. An investment. An investment of 12 million was all was made in new gym equipment across all centers. That's good identification. So the next thing that you have to whenever you're given a figure, tell us is it material or immaterial in the financial statement? Don't be silent. The next thing you have to tell us 12 million, is it material or immaterial? Both to the statement financial position and to the statement profit and loss. I'm sure that you are following. Whenever you're given an amount, tell us. So you have to do some calculations, not in the not uh, in the question paper or in, in the under seat. No, no, no. Do it somewhere. We just want, we just need a final solution here. I'm sure I'm clear on that. So let us calculate. <coughs> in relation to total assets, let us go on using the total asset figure. Let me scroll down, uh, given the total asset figure. Want to consider does it is it exhibit three or give you some figures here? Capital expenditure in the associated borrowings, cash total assets. Do you see? So please use when I when I calculating the when I consider the materiality of uh, of a matter, use the projected figures. Use what? The projected figures. So you're supposed to say 12, uh, 12 million divided by 12 divided by 130 million times 100 percent. That's how you calculate or you determine. The materiality level of the, of, of the matter, which is under consideration. So you say 12, I'm sure that you're dividing 12 divided by 130 times 100 percent. What do you get? <coughs> Hello. It comes up to nine point two three percent. So you see that now the, 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 the amount is material. So full stop, then you have to continue the, by writing. Full stop condition. The amount is, is material. 
the amount is material to the financial statements. The amount is material, let us say, the, the amount is material as it represents 9 point something percent of total assets, of projected figure of total assets, yes, as it represents 9 point something percent of projected figure of total assets, of projected figure of total assets. Am I clear there? The next thing, we are still going with our statement. Then, then the thing. So there's a risk that there is a risk that the, the whole amount was capitalized. There is a risk. The moment I say there's a risk, which means I'm assuming, I'm saying something may go wrong. Something probably done by the client's management. The person of recorded the lecture, so. Let us show progress, please. <clears throat> if you are in a noise environment, I kindly ask you to, to, to just press a mute button. Button. Okay, fine. I'm saying um. So there is a risk that the whole amount was capitalized. There is a risk that the whole amount was capitalized. There is a risk that the whole amount was capitalized. Just imagine if you do you some you have to perform some analytical procedures here. 32 million from 20 million to 32 million. What's the difference? What is the difference? Hello. Hello, guys. 32. Yeah. I mean the function is zip default three. 32 minus 20, we get 12 million. Hello? So, there's a risk that the whole amount was capped, and this is evidenced by a significant increase in capital expenditures and also the borrowings by 12 million. You are writing, you are supporting your point, you are appraising. Look, I've identified my main issue from exhibit two. Now I'm using those issues, now I'm building a meaningful paragraph using other information that I'm giving on exhibit three. That's why I keep on saying, please try to read the whole story and understand it. Are we together, guys? Hello? Yes, we are following. Yes. yes, yes. Respond quickly, guys. So, yes, this is this is evidence by significant increase in capital expenditure and the borrowings by twelve percent, by, by, by twelve million. So, what what will the end result? Which means, which means, uh, the total assets are overstated. Which, which could result in overstatement of uh, of of um, non current assets and probably and understatement of what operating expenses. Remember, we cannot. There's no need. According to I sixteen, we cannot capitalize the whole amount. There's some cost, other cost that is that should be expensed. They are not all costs. It's practically it's possible. So now there's a trend to express a point that there's a risk of misapplication of, 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 of I-16 account where the provisions of I-16 capitalization. That's the point that I'm trying to express. You as a professional account, you know that wherever there's a capital expenditure, there should be some revenue expenditures. There's some costs that are not all costs that are supposed to be capitalized. Some they need to be expensed, some they need to be capitalized. 
So that's what I'm saying. And then I was up raising my point, supporting my point with other information from other exhibits. That's the first point. Then let's go up. You see, I've indicated which elements of financing that are at risk, non current assets and operating expenses. I've clearly indicated which elements of the financial statement are at risk when you are discussing, when appraising, when evaluating what risk or the risk of material statement. At the end of a discussion, at the end of evaluation, show us which elements of the financial statement uh, financial uh, statement associates that at risk see with that so I suppose we are focused okay let us proceed let us proceed I'm just speaking just speaking um there's an issue of here yeah, second paragraph that, that next paragraph An advertising campaign has been launched to promote the company brand generally and to make customers aware of the investments in the facilities which have been made. As part of this campaign, the company paid $1 million to a famous athlete to endorse the company for a period of two years. The athlete will appear at the, at the opening of the new coastal sports center and has agreed to feature in post advertisements for the next two years. So um, <clears throat> the period here is very important. We are here about this authority who has paid, isn't it? One million to endorse the Kanban, to endorse the Kanban for, 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 for the next two years. So there's a main issue about, uh, uh, the main issue here is about the recognition of one million. Do you know, are you aware of, we are not applying the accounting standard, thinking applying the accounting standard, how, how uh, uh, the one million should be treated, how one million dollars uh, paid to the famous authority supposed to be treated in the books of account, in the financial statements. And what is the appropriate heading that you have to put or to insert? So in this case, what is the appropriate heading? Concerning the fee paid to, 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 to this uh, famous athlete. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, guys. Uh, yes, we are, we are still trying to think. Thing, I've guided you guys, uh, shown you, indicated that there's a, 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 a an amount that they paid to a firma that to endorse the company for 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 for, for a period of two years. So I say, an appropriate just need an appropriate heading that you may put there. What is it? What is it? So am I right? Amount paid to famous threat or someone is endorsement fee. Simple like that. Amount paid to a famous threat or someone can say, right? Endorsement fee. Someone can say advertisement. Fee, it's fine. But the purpose of this is it's made of endorsing the come of your advertise, the combine or whatever. So you have tried. Identify the combine paid one million to a female that to endorse the combine for a period of two years. That's good. It's enough. The next thing, whenever you're given a fee. I mean, sorry, whenever you give an amount, tell us, is it material or immaterial to the finance? That's the next thing. Please, I'm sure that you are following simple steps. 
whatever given after you, have, after you select the risk, the next thing, if, if you're given amount, the next thing you have to assess, determine the materiality. So in this case, it's about the fee paid to an athlete. Uh, you have to, to calculate because you have to consider its metric in relation to project net profit for the year, isn't it? And again, to assets. So let us go down to exhibit three again. Why I'm to consider the material in relation to to to, to profit and and again to to total assets because this fee is supposed to to be recognized over two years should be recognized over what two years in this year in the period which is under review should be recognized as an expense that the part should be deferred you see so we have to make assumption that okay let, let us say the management have recognized the whole amount how the finance statement they could be mistreated mis uh, mis 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 so please make thing have to calculate 1 million divided by 6.1. How do you get? Use project figure, profit before check this figure. Profit before tax. I'm getting 14.49%. One divided by one. Okay, 14.49. It means 14. Net profit. What about in relation to total assets? One thirty times hundred. One divided by one thirty times hundred percent. Zero point seven seven percent. Zero point seven seven percent is fine. So you have to say it's my this at uh, zero zero point zero zero point what? Yes, fine. 0.77%. Okay, 0.77% is fine. So you have to tell us. Um, so in this case, the matter, the amount is material in relation to, to, to profit before projected uh, profit before tax, isn't it? Is it represent 14.5 percent? Is material. And immaterial in relation to the same financial process, it represent I don't know zero point seven something percent of total of uh, to, uh, of projected uh, total assets figure. Something which is very very important. Okay, fine. Sorry, the next sir. thing, yes. Sorry, sir, I just wanted to ask. Uh, current, current zero point seven seven. Uh, would you not consider that is quite material? Well, for saying the cost is one percent, almost one percent of our mm -hmm. total assets. Okay, almost one percent. Oh, oh, oh yeah, it, it depends. Because you remember, we do have the some special guideline to to the, this one. We are using which guideline? There's some uh, uh, no figures that you should rely on the, that can help the, fig, the auditor. I'm sure I've seen those you no know, guidance. How to consider some of this material revenue from 0 0.5 to 1 percent? The, the auditor will choose the figure which is between that one and amount which exceeds that one is considered to be material. And I've discussed about total assets, we discussed about gross profit and other things. Okay, so you may re yes, you may revisit that one. It's, 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 I'm sure it's help going to help you. Okay, thank you, sir. That is if the one who covered this you no, know, no, give me, uh, give me the, you know, the wrong answer is fine. But I'm just working on what I've given. It's fine. So um, 
so you uh, consider this one then see uh, if look I'm, I'm assuming I'm applying ODD. I'm just making an assumption. I'm, I'm assuming if, if listen to me, professional skepticism, I'm applying that knowledge. I'm assuming I'm allowed to do so as an auditor. You see, they say this amount, if you say this amount should be uh, 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 recognized over two years. Fruit of continuity, this amount should be recognized over two years. So if management recognize the whole amount in this period under review, if the class management or the management recognize the whole amount in this period under review, So tell us what would what would be the end result? How would the financial system could be maintained instead? Which elements of the financial system that are at risk? You have to tell us the amount uh, should be recognized over two years. Yes, that's that's what should have that's that's what should be done. So if the whole if the whole amount was recognized in this period, which is under review. Profits will be understated. Which has called the profit will be understated. What about assets? It, as well as assets, isn't it? As well as the assets, they will be understated. So bear this in mind that the amount should be deferred until to the next uh, financial accounting period, half of that amount. So if the whole amount recognized this year, which means it's going to be recognized in expense, Which means if the expense understated, which is obvious, the end result that the profits would be understated. The other half that's supposed to be recognized in the same financial position, which means the assets again they would be understated. You see, I'm clearly indicating which elements of the financial statement that are at risk, or the financial statement assertion that are at risk. Tell us, we are focusing on the financial statements. We are focusing on the what? Financial statements. Isn't it? That's good. Last identification. Hello? Yes, we are listening. Yes, let us proceed. That's all. We are done at that point. I'm sure that you are, you are seeing the way I'm flowing my idea. Now let us identify something without figures. And how I'm using the information from other exhibits. So people, some students, they may um, they may confuse sometimes. There's some other point that may raised as the uh, business risk. So it, it it depends the way that you are going to to express them. Uh, uh, to could uh, uh, in other words, how are you going to, to to consider how they may affect as well the financial statements? It depends the way you're going to write about it. For example. So the corporate governance has some if impact on the poor corporate governance. They have, they have some impact on the financial statements. Someone can write it again as what? As the risk of material statement. In uh, as in, in uh, risk. Due to that, I mean is that now we are focusing on the financial statement. So here we are given last but not uh, this one point. Let us discuss with this point. They say a new data management system has been introduced, which integrates membership information with accounting software. This allows more efficient management of the customer database, which is uh, used 
extensively for marketing purposes, as well as providing more time information financial performance to management. Data from the previous system was transferred to the new system July 20x8. The two systems uh, ran in parallel for two months. While training was given to staff and the new system was monitored. One feature of the new system is that it records and reports on the three hours of access provided to unemployed people, which the company has to report in a monthly basis to the government. Are you noticing some control risk there? Hello? Are you noticing something like control risk? Hello? Someone can write a new data management system because there is some control risk there. So, a new data or someone say, Are we in agreement? Hello. Are we in agreement? Hello, guys. Hello, I didn't quite uh, get you. Your line was breaking. Hello. Okay. I'm saying. I was reading this about a new data management that has been introduced, and the two systems were uh, ran in parallel for months. What staff was, was being trained, even though the yes, of course, the system was being monitored. Period of from previous system, a new system. Then said there's a risk, there's a control risk there. So you may write submitting a new data system, a new data management system that underlying. They have to identify where the risk is, where the risk is. You see, a new data management system has been introduced. A new data management system has been introduced. Uh, which integrates membership information with accounting software, which integrates membership information with accounting software. And records and records and reports and records and reports on the three hours of access and record and report on the free hours of access provided to unemployed people. On the free hours of access provided to unemployed people. That's good. That's good identification. So, So there's control risk, or the risk is that, or the risk is that errors could okay, errors could okay, or could be made, errors could be made. Where exactly, um, when, uh, when, 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 when the uh, the data was being transferred from the previous system to the new system, whilst the uh, training was given to staff, that's good. At the same time, the data has been transferred to the previous system, the new system. At the same time, the staff have been trained. So, 
there's a possibility of error that you know, they, 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 you know, they could be made they, or they, they can obtain during that period of transferring the data from previous to the new system. What could be the end result? Which could lead, which can lead, or which could lead to, 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 to report We, or which could read, yes, we, uh, record and report. Which could lead to, to record and report false uh, free hours of access to the, to, uh, 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 to the government. Falls three hours of access to the government. So what will, what will happen if you report false hours due to that? Sometimes it, it's probably the government may say you have to repay the loan, the, the grant. Remember they'll be given a grant to do that, to provide these free hours to all unemployed people. So the government, they say, no, you have to repay that grant. And this makes the grant to be repay, to be payable. And this makes a grant to be payable. And this can make a grant to be payable. Once the grant is, is, is being pay, is now payable, which means, um, According to I-37, provisions, liability contingent assets, and adequate disclosure needs to be provided in most of the financial statements, which means an adequate disclosure needs to be provided in most of the financial statements. That's all. I'm ending by clearly showing how the financial statement could be uh, Material misstated or which element of financing that could be at risk. In this case, I'm talking about disclosure or even a provision should be recognized or a disclosure should be what? Should be made if, if uh, that is the case. Am I clear, guys? I'm applying the provision of IAS 20. Government grants that whenever you breach some condition of the grant, of course, some grants, they, 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 some grants you have to repay them. And of course, a, a provision should be recognized or a contingent liability should be adequately disclosed in most the financial statements altogether. But how basically can I express my point? They have to apply those provisions relating in, uh, relating to this scenario, relating to the care that I'm giving. How to get this? Hello? Yes, we are following. That's good. You see, logic of flow of, of idea. The main is that your idea, are they flowing? I'm sure we have discussed a lot of things. Then the other thing that you have to, uh, uh, when you're writing, it's a matter of, we need, um, Conclusion. After we discuss everything, a up to short e, a up to e. Yes, a up to e. After you are done with your question, a up to e, we need a conclusion. So I'm sure that is jotting down. We have to write a conclusion, a subheading conclusion. We need to see that one conclusion. So on your conclusion, you're going to just to highlight areas that need to be approached with the high uh, degree of professional skepticism. Please, on your conclusion, you just highlight areas that need to be approached with a high degree of professional skepticism. Are you following what I'm saying? Areas. 
And, and those areas used in the audio are going to use your professional judgment. I cannot, I cannot tell you which area, which meta is, is that need to be approached with the high professional services. No, no, no. You, you are going to use your professional judgment. You're just emphasizing your boss. Well, this is not they're going to be used for team briefing. There are some juniors, those people, all the juniors who are, uh, who are from university, they need to be informed before the audit commences. They need to be, need some team briefing to do a team briefing. So you're preparing things for, 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 for work, not for the exam. Please, in exam, just take everything uh, as if you are you are at the workplace. You are not in the exam. So in conclusion, please clearly highlight area that need to be approached with the high professional skepticism. That's all. Then you are done. Question number one. After conclusion, after write A, B, C, D, and you have to write. And I'm sure, I'm sure I've guided you guys how to apply. So please, when I ever given a question, try for all means to go and read, apply. For you to be able to apply these, uh, the, the account standard. Usually, you need a question. You can read from the notes or audit notes what they're saying. Okay, okay, okay. So, I have to do this. Yeah, they're talking about the government grant IS20. So, in this case, which provision are, are, are relevant to this? Or how basically can I design the principle to be used in the grant system? Go and read about the grant so that you may come up with, the, with the, all the processes that are max. You want to see when I design this procedure, the same um, We need another a logical. Procedures that are written in bullet points, write them in point form. And they should be clear, they, you have to explain them. You have to get why. Don't say, we oh, have to have a So, in statement, we have to determine, you have to identify that the reason of, of that procedure. Why are you applying that procedure? Why did you say the procedure? Any question on that? So we plan to put all the procedure, write them six. Write them what? Six points in point form, point form, point form, point form, point form. using bullet points. That's how we write all the procedures. So guys, uh, I'm sure I've covered what's supposed to come today. Um, the next thing that uh, that you that we're going to do is about um, prospective financial information. Prospective what? Financial information. Please, guys, read your notes. Uh, listen to these videos again. Do not pile up your work. Listen to them, please. You have, must have time, especially for those people who, who are absent. Or if you're absent, please travel. It means to have time to listen to these videos, jot down some, jotting something down. Yes, very soon I'm going to give you some assignments. So when I meet, I'm sure I'm planning to probably Sunday, Sunday morning, we can. We can do, uh, I'll, I'll tell you tomorrow exactly what time we can do that one prospective financial information on Sunday. I will let you know by tomorrow. Then we can finish about it. Then we have to prepare for some prospective financial information. So you may read uh, uh, that topic. Ahead. Thank you, guys. Cheer. Say good night. <coughs> Thank you.
Good night. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye.